However, this seminar that I'm going to actually teach you right now, if you get this right, this is the key to keep the way off. Once you lose the way, this is the key to keep it off. So, but let's begin with the goal setting. So get your, your, your sheet. Remember last time that we set up your long-term goal and your monthly goal? We're going to get into more specifics. Your last time, Car Clarissa taught you a little bit about eating. Now, if you go to your goal sheet, there is going to be a part. There, there is actually a part where we talk about your motivations, and you're supposed to write down the whys, the reason why you want to lose weight. Now, let's keep this in mind. I'm just going to give you a couple of examples. If you want a big family, you must pay the price. Not everybody wants a big family, and it's okay. Not everybody wants five kids, and it's okay. You probably want one or you want two. If you want five, you must pay the price for it. If you want to become a millionaire, you might pay the price. Instead of working eight hours, you might be working 16 hours. You might be working on the weekends. You might be working the holidays. You might learn more. There is a lot of things. Not everybody wants to be a millionaire. And it's okay not to be. The same with your weight loss. You have to keep that in mind. If you want to lose weight, you want to be healthy, that's okay. You don't have to have the best body ever. But if you want to tone your body, and if you want to get that nice, that nice body, you must pay the price as well. And like I said, not everybody's willing to pay the price to get there. So keep that in mind and be honest with yourself. Be honest. If you want a better body than what you have right now, you, might, you, you need to es escalate what you're doing. So... Now let's go to your goal setting. This is very important. Go to eating habits. And now in eating habits, be honest with you. I'm going to give you a couple ideas. We're going to set up a couple goals. You know what you're doing right and you know what you're doing wrong. The only thing that I'm going to do right now is give you those ideas. So we talk a little bit about eating. Now you know why it's very important for you to eat healthy and eat a lot of veggies, as an example. Now, not everybody's ready to, to be there. Let's be honest with that. Not everybody is ready to, to leave the oil. Not everybody is not ready to, eat, to become vegan. You might be ready. If you're ready, please do it. But if you're not ready, set up goals. So here is a great example. If you don't cook... That could be a great goal to start with in your eating habits. Cooking. How many days a week are you going to be cooking? One, two, three times a week, four times a week, five times a week. How many times do you need to cook a week for you to be able to have enough meal during the whole week? So write it down and be honest with you. Now, within the cooking itself, what are you doing? Are you adding 50% veggies? Are you adding 40%? Are you adding 80% veggies? Are you cutting the meats? Are you keeping the meats? Are you cutting the red meats? Are you only eating white meats? What are you doing there? So write it down in specific exactly what you're going to do on those eating habits. Okay, another great example that you can do. If you're not leaving the meats and you continue eating meats, what about the processed foods? Are you making everything from scratch? You're not buying anything canned, anything already packaged. That's another goal. Be honest with you once again and write down exactly what you're going to do. Remember, the more specific you are, the better it's going to work. That's only on the cooking. Now, let's talk a little bit about your snack. What are you snacking on? On Cheetos? Frito-Lays? Um, sweet breads? Pastries, okay, if you do that, be honest with yourself. Are you ready to leave that? You're not ready. Are you willing to exchange it for a fruit? Are you willing to exchange it for, for a veggie? How many, if you're addicted to it, we understand that you're addicted to it. It's okay. It's okay to accept it. If you're not willing, if you snack in a pastry every, every day, can you, can you, instead of cutting the whole thing, can you do three pastries a week? Can you do four? Can you do two? Write it down. Write it down. Be as specific with it.
You don't need your breakfast because you're rushing out of the door. There is a lot of options for breakfast. You can actually make it before, you can make a smoothie. There is a lot of things that you can do in the morning. If you don't eat breakfast, what can you do to start eating breakfast? Write down on a specific goal. Are you gonna eat breakfast every day? Are you gonna do it three times a week? When you gonna be doing, when you gonna be eating breakfast? Next point. You're gonna learn a lot about added sugar drinks in a moment. Sarah is gonna give you a great presentation on this, but I'm gonna just get ahead a little bit and I'm just gonna tell you to write down a couple goals there. Once Sarah give you this presentation, you will understand how it will affect you. Um, when you. When you actually have drink any type of sugar added drink that you don't think is affecting you. However, you can set up a specific goal again. If you drink soda, if you drink can juice, anything, if you do it for the flavor, you do two or three can juice a day or one a day, are you willing to cut it back down? Everything, one, two, three, what is the goal? Alcohol also contributes to weight gain. If you have one, here is a great example. We have, I have a video that I'm posting, I believe it's today, today or tomorrow. She's one of our members and she lost a lot of weight with us. Has been six months since she has been with us and she changed her body completely. And one of the, and she says it in, in, in the interview we, um, I'm presenting here in this video, that one of the big changes she did, it, she used to drink one glass of wine, one glass of wine a day. She cut that and makes a big difference in her life. Not only she's losing weight, but at the same time she has more energy. She, besides having more energy, she has more stamina, more strength. She feels better. So once again, if you don't not willing to cut the whole thing, what are you willing to do? If you're drinking one glass of wine or two, are you willing to drink one a day? Are you willing to drink drink three a day? Be honest with with yourself and set up a goal. Remember, once again, the more you do, the more results you're gonna you're gonna get. Okay. So we're gonna talk the next thing on your goal set on the goal setting and the sheet that, that you have. It talks about eating schedule. So this is very simple. You eating schedule, this is how you should do it. Not everybody should follow the same time, but what you need to keep in mind is this, the, the time, the separation of the time. So when you wake up, I recommend you usually eat your breakfast between, within an hour. That's your breakfast. Then you have a snack. The snack is around three hours. And what I snack on is fruit. That's the only thing that I snack on. Is that true, Sandro? Yeah. Yeah, I usually don't snack in anything else. I try to make some research on my brain, see if I've had snack in something else lately. No, fruit. Then I do my, my, my lunch. <coughs> so lunch around 12, 1. <coughs> then you have another snack around 4. And then you have your dinner between 7 and 9. Some people think that by eating late, you're gaining weight, and that's a lie. That's a myth. Now... Before we continue, then anybody knows why you're eating those two snacks in the middle? You got it. Very simple. Many people, and this is the reason why they gain a lot of weight. Many of my clients come and they're overweight and they say, I don't eat anything. I don't eat, I don't eat during the day. Then we talk about everything, and yes, they don't eat during the day. But then they come home and they eat a lot because they're starving when they, eat, when, when they come home. And not only they eat a lot, but they eat anything that is in front of them because it's the wrong food, because they're hungry, they just wanna eat. When you give yourself, when you eat, when you eat your snacks during, between your meals, then you're not that hungry. And you give yourself not only time to prepare your food, but to be conscious about what you're eating. So that's why those snacks are very important, okay? 
Okay, so now that we finished with the, with the um, goal setting of today, we're gonna be we're gonna be talking about great great concepts that I apply in my life. And it, like I said, if you apply this in your life, you're gonna be fulfilling. It takes time it takes time to understand this, but people who actually apply this in their life are the people who are super happy. But before we start there, before before we begin there, let's talk about maintenance. You have a car, I bet. And your car needs maintenance. And it's an oil change. You need to clean it. You need to do a tune-up. You need to, to repair anything that goes wrong with it. What happens if you don't do maintenance in that car for 50,000 miles? It might not get there. It might go. It might break. Your house needs maintenance. Your yard needs maintenance. Everything in life needs maintenance. Everything. I don't know why don't we think that our body needs maintenance. I don't know why we let our body to just let it die because that's what we do as we aging because we don't maintain our body. We, we can maintain our car, our house, everything, but we neglect our body. So you have to keep that in mind. Why maintenance is very important? Because the problem with a lot of people, they lose weight and they regain it. They lose weight and they regain it. It's because they don't maintenance their body. They're just looking for a quick fix. They want to get it off and they think that because, let's say you do an oil change and because you did that oil change, you think it's gonna last you for the whole car? You need to do it again. So the same with your body. If you exercise once or twice or for three months, it's not gonna be enough. You need to do it forever. If you eat healthy for one or two months, it's not gonna be enough. You have to do it forever. It's a maintenance. And not only, not only you're gonna look great, but at the same time, you're gonna feel great. You're gonna become younger. So keep that in mind. It's maintenance. There is no pill, there is no pomade, there is no diet, there is nothing that is gonna help you. It's gonna be the maintenance that you put into your body. Okay? Okay, so now, we're gonna get into the very good deal. I love this. To me, it's a very, uh, to me, it's amazing. It really surprised me. So, out of a, out of a hundred percent of people, let's put four hundred people, okay? A hundred percent, ninety-five percent of people will regain the weight once they get into a weight loss program. They will regain it within the year before the year. I'm sorry, that's a lie. They actually dropped the program. 95% of the 5% that is left, they regain the, the, the weight within two years. That leaves the 5% of the 95% of the 5%. With that means there is only one person out of 400. They loses the weight and keep it off. Why only one person? Because they're not willing to do the maintenance. Now, there is not only in that. Let's talk a little bit about business. Out of millions of businesses that open in the United States, more than 90% will close within the year. Same as statistics, same thing. The other percentage, which I'm not sure about, they close within three years. A small percentage, they, keep, they stay open, but they don't grow. They're stuck. They're, they're, they're stuck in one area. Only the smaller percent of those businesses are the ones that grow big. They go big and they make an impact such as Apple. That's, a, that's only an example. There is no many companies like that. Same thing with marriages. Out of three people, they get, out of three couples that get married, two of them, they will divorce. Um, out of those, they stay together. They stay together and they're unhappy. And only the small percentage of that, they're happy. What a coincidence on all those statistics. And it's very simple. All that requires work. And the problem with us is that we're not willing to pay it. And sometimes it's not that. Sometimes we don't understand it. And because we don't understand it, that's when we make that mistake. And when you start understanding how life works, 
we willing to work when somebody when somebody knows how to put it easy into us. Let's say if we're talking about statistics, if we talk about factoring, if we talk about mathematics, when somebody comes and explains explain that by apples, we're willing to do the math because it's fun to do it. But when somebody comes and tells us you have to do this, multiply this and divide this and then factor this and this, it becomes a chaos in our head and we're not willing to do it. When life gets complex, we're not willing to do it because it's too difficult. But when somebody makes it, makes it easy to, and put it in, a, in an easy way, we're willing to try. So this is what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna put it in an easy way for you. I'm gonna explain it to you. So let's begin. Okay. The first thing that you have to know, is that you probably already know, is that every single human being has problems. Raise your hand if you don't have any problems. Okay, so <laughs> let's talk about this. And this is very, you have to think about this because I see this pattern with a lot of people. Everybody has a reason, an excuse, or something going on. Every time. Do you think if, we're, if anybody, if you don't have any problems, do you think you can lose weight? So then you're not going to lose weight until you die because you're always going to have problems. We're always going to have problems. Always, always, always. So this is what I hear from a guy. The, the, the only break that you have from problems is when you have problems, 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 and a crisis. You have problems, 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 and a crisis. So you really never have a break. The only break that you have is when you have a crisis. And then I hear from this guy, you should follow this guy. By the way, he's dead. You probably hear about him before. His name is Jim Ron. He, he spreads, he, he actually explained this very well. You can get rid of problems. You can, you can get rid of winter by turning off the calendar. The only way that you can get rid of problems is by you becoming better, by you becoming more skilled, more knowledgeable, and a better person, a stronger than the problems. If you don't become stronger than those problems, those problems are always going to be there and they're always going to defeat you. So you must defeat those problems. So the only way, once again, to defeat those problems is by you becoming a better person. That makes sense. Okay? So this is what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to help you to get rid of those problems by making you a better person, by you understanding how you can become a better person. Okay? So, anybody learn about the Maslow hierarchies? Okay. I, I learned that theory before I learned it in school. I learned it from a great author. He's actually a Latin author and he explains it very well. And I've been applying this in my life for six years and it helps me amazingly. I'm always happy. I have a lot of problems, but I'm always happy because I apply, I apply this on my life. So are we ready? Let's begin with the first thing. We have four base, basic needs. So four basic needs. They're needs. We, we need those to progress. If we don't do this, then we can't progress and we're not happy and we're not fulfilled. The first one is the physical need. The second one is the emotional need, or you can do a spiritual need as well. The third one is acceptance. And the fourth one is the material. Let me explain those four. Many people get stuck in this area, in any of this. So the basic needs, you need to clean yourself, you need to go to the restroom, you need to eat, you need to drink water, you need to sleep, you need to exercise. Those are basics. If you don't meet any of these needs, 
then you won't be able to do anything. So here's an example. If you're thinking about going, to, if you worry about going to the restroom, you're not worrying about getting any, anything else. All your attention is going to the restroom. If you're tired, you haven't slept enough for days, you can't think about getting accepted. All you want to do is sleep. So the basic needs, you, can, you actually meet all these needs within one day. Or sometimes within hours, you jump from one need to another. So I already explained the, the physical needs. So you must take care of those physical needs to be able to move forward. The emotional, the spiritual need, it's when you feel safe. If you don't feel safe, you can't work on anything else. If you worry too much, sometimes you forget about things and you start working. You enter into the material, but because you forgot. But if you worry, if you don't, if you don't have that basic way of feeling safe, you can't move forward. This is a spiritual need. It's when you trust something, when you trust God, when you trust life, when you trust the universe, when you trust something. That's a need. Acceptance. We, all, we are social beings. And we love to be accepted. We love to communicate. We love to be with people and socialize. Many people get stuck here because they're not accepted. They don't think they're accepted the way they are. And sometimes we get stuck here because we are accepted by the wrong people. Okay? And the fourth and last, the last of the basic needs is the material need. The material need is when we acquire material th things. A car, a house, clothing, and things like that. There is nothing wrong with it. We all want that stuff. And for us to continue moving forward, it's okay to do it. But the problem is when we put all our energy in any of those. So here's a great example. Many people, right here, many people will drink and they put all the energy in the physical need. Because they're drinking a lot, they can't move forward. Many people work a lot and they're just thinking about acquiring material things, cars, houses, traveling, and so on. And they can't move forward. Other people, they worry too much and they don't trust anything and they're stuck right there. And other people, like I said, they don't feel accepted or they're accepted by the wrong people. What I mean with the wrong people is if you have your goals and you have your priorities, here is a great example. My priority is to take care of my family. I love my family. I'm going to make them, I'm, I'm going to give all my life to them. And I want my whole, my, my kids to be very successful. So I'm going to teach them what, what they need to learn from me for them to be successful. Um, And then, instead of putting that time with that, you put that time with people that they like to drink. And you go with them out and drink all the time. So you're being accepted by the wrong people. You're not being accepted by your family. You're being accepted by the people who's not helping you move forward. So when you set up your priorities very clear, you know where you're going. So many people are stuck right here. Okay? Remember, the physical need is when people gain weight. They're stuck right there. Now, let's talk about the last four needs, which they're called the four needs of superior awareness. Fifth is learning. Sixth is teaching or creating. Seventh is caring or service. And eighth is purpose. These people right here, whoever climbed to here, are the people that usually don't get stuck because they know. They know what's going on in life. 
When you start learning, you understand that learning is for life. It's maintenance. You don't just learn right now. You learn every day. Just like you exercise every day and eat healthy every day, you learn every day. Every day, every day, every day. And when you learn every day, you forget about these areas because you're ready to climb to the next area. If you don't meet this one, you can't teach because you don't have the knowledge, because you haven't applied in your life. When you apply in your life, then you can teach. When you can teach or create, when you're waving, when you're creating any, anything in, in, in the house or any uh, theory or anything, you're creating. You forget about everything else and you enjoy this time. That's why people who actually are creating all the time are super happy. Service. Service is when we care about the other person. It's when we notice that our life has changed. Since our life has changed because we apply all this and we want to make a change in life, we want to listen to that person who wants to be listened, who is going in through a breakup, depression, who needs an advice, whatever it is. That's the caring zone. And for the last zone is the, uh, the purpose. Purpose is when you know you have been made to make a change in this world. So you wake up every day and you know you have a goal. You know that you are, a, a, um, that you are here to, to, to change this world, to make something different, to impact somehow in a positive way. So keep all this in mind because what I'm going to talk to you about next it's going to attach to this. So this is what I do. This is how I live my life. That doesn't mean that you need to live it like that. But it will give you a clear example how you can divide your life. And this is where the problems kick in. And this is when so many people say, like, I have a problem after problem after problem, and I don't see that, that, that my life is, is changing. It's, it's, um, I don't see that I'm progressing. When you see this right now, you'll see how it's going to be very clear for you how the problems actually kick in. Sometimes it's just life. Life happens. Sometimes are decisions we make. Those problems don't happen right away. Sometimes are decisions. If somebody, let's say, have diabetes, it didn't ha that diabetes didn't happen overnight. Are decisions that you made back in the past, all the decisions, they just accumulate and they just happen within the moment. But let's say... You're driving, all of a sudden a tree falls in your car. That's life. That's not a decision you made. So those are those type of problems. Decision you make and life happens. And you have to know how to deal with both of them. And you have to understand, if you understand that you made a bad decision and you fix it, next time in your life, 10 years, is not going to come back because you're fixing that mistake. Life might happen, which is okay, but you don't have the problem with the decisions that you're making. Now, that doesn't mean that you're perfect. You're still going to make, um, you're still going to make mistakes and you're still going to have to pay the price of those mistakes. But the more you learn, the, the less mistakes you're going to make and you're not going to be making the same, same mistakes. So let's talk about this. This is very important. So this is how I divide my life. One, my connection with God. Now, by the way, I'm not selling you here a religion. I'm not selling you God. This is what I believe on. If you want to believe in the universe, if you want to believe in the end in the house, it's your belief. I'm not passing my belief to you. This is how I divide my life. So hopefully it works for you. Second, I divide it in my family. Third, I divide it in my Health. Fourth, I do it in my profession. Fifth, I do it in my finances. Now, this is what is important to me. I don't have the most luxury things in life, but I'm very grateful I have them. My car, my clothes my house, 
my eyes, I can't see. The other day I met a person who he can't see. He's learning how to, how to walk with, with the cane because he doesn't know. He, 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 he can't see. I have my eyes. I'm very fortunate because, because of that. I have both hands. I can speak. I have some knowledge. I give thanks every day for everything that I have. I picture my future, what I want to be. So that's every morning. In the, in the evening, I go for a walk. I go for a walk alone. I love to let everything go and have a connection about everything that I'm thinking, all the problems. And it's something amazing when you go for a walk for 30 minutes in an hour alone. It's like all the problems that you have, you always get an answer. Always get an answer. So I don't spend my time. That's me again. That's, I'm not, I'm not trying to, to say anything bad about anybody or anything like that. But this is very important for me that I'm not willing to go watch TV. I'm not willing to drink. I'm not willing to do anything else before I do this. So I do this every day. My family. I don't spend a lot of time here because I don't have one. But when I have one, I be devoted to it. The only thing I have right now is my brother and my animals. So I don't have a family, I don't have kids, I don't have a wife. When I have it, then I be devoted there. So I can't tell you much about it. My health. My health, I do exercise every day, five times a week. I should say five, six times a week I exercise, an hour. I don't go without exercising. If I have to work a lot, I get up at 3.30 in the morning and I go exercise. I don't go without exercising. First. Second, I make the best choices on my food. Sometimes when I have to be make bad choices, because I do make bad choices, I make the best choices and the bad choices. So if I go eat, as an example, out, I choose restaurants when, when I, as an example, organic, Sometimes there is no organic. I choose something that is vegetarian, or I try to do my best with them when I go out and I'm not prepared. But that's not all the time. Once a week, maybe twice a week. But I usually eat at home. I make sure I give my time to eat. That's my priority. Those are priorities. Profession. I cannot move forward. I cannot help people. If I don't experiment, if I don't learn, if I don't read, if I don't, re if I don't go and listen to other people who's more capable than I am. So that's what I do all the, every day. I take courses, I read, I do something at least an hour in my profession. That's important every day. Finances. I don't waste my money on things that don't matter. I either invest in them on things that are going to give me money back or invested in things that matter, such as my health, my knowledge, okay, my family, or my connection with God. I give money away to charities who need it. This is very important for me. The rest, I don't care. Now, why this is important? I'm going to tell you, this is, this, is, this is the fun part. If you don't take care of your health because you neglect it, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to have problems in the future. You're going to have problems. If you take bad decisions, you're going to have problems. If life happens, you're going to have problems. Now, I'm gonna, this, is, this, is, this is very interesting. Before I go to the next area, I want to I wanna explain something to you. I'm going to bring this down in a minute. Positive and negative. So in the Bible, there is a story about Joseph in the Pharaoh, uh, the, the Pharaoh had a dream about seven skinny cows and seven fat cows. Had a dream about the seven bad grains and seven good grains. Nobody could, I'm, I'm not going to tell you the whole story, but let's summarize it. Nobody could tell him, nobody could, could interpret that dream to the, far, to the Pharaoh. So they called Joseph. He was in jail, by the way. So Joseph came to the Pharaoh, to the Pharaoh and he said, I know what you, you, dream, you dream means. God has talked to me, and I can tell you what's going on. It means, because actually in the dream, the, the skinny cows ate the fat cows, and the bad grains um, killed the good grains. 
And, this, and Joseph goes like, that means there is going to be seven years of abundance in Egypt and seven years of scar scarcity. So the only thing that you can do to actually not to, for Egypt to survive, if, when it's abundance, you have to save everything you can. So when it's scarcity, you have stuff so we can eat and we can survive. So the Pharaoh gave all the responsibility to Joseph. That means that every single person in life has seven good years and seven bad years. Doesn't have to be years, sometimes are weak, sometimes are months. So in other words, it's gonna happen even though if you don't want to, you're gonna have bad times. I have bad times all the time. Now, this is where I notice which one is suffering. I have bad times here, 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 or here. Either because of the decisions I made or because life is just happening to me. As an example, I love my dogs. Two of them got into an accident and spent a lot of money and surgeries on them, on them. And I was in a lot of stress. Life happened right there. It wasn't a decision I made. It was just life happened. But at the same time, I have been in a bad situation because of decisions I made. So, one... One, two, three, four, five, all the way to 10. One, two, three, four, all the way to 10. So if you pay attention to this, you have that connection every day with, with God. You take care of your family every day. You take care of your health every day. Your profession, you do an amazing there. You take care of your finances. you are in positive 10. Life happens, so you make bad decisions. You drop. You might drop all the way down to here. But you get in your feet. Now, you're good at it, and you're taking great care of it, great taking care of it in a good way. This is, you might drop right there, and you might go like this. But you neglect any of those areas. Guess what's going to happen? You go down there. And then you try to get out of that hole. You don't make it. And you don't have the habits. You don't have the habits to manage your money, your profession, your family, or anything. And as soon as you get out of there, here's a great example. The other day I was telling you the, the, the story of one person that I interviewed. That he, he went to his stop in the hospital many times because he just wanted a quick fix. He got the quick fix. He's suffering all the time because he's not taking care of that area. He might be good in other areas. Now, think about this. You get cancer. Guess what area is going to get affected? This area is going to get affected. This area is going to get affected. This area is going to get affected. You waste all your money. This area is going to get affected. This area is going to get affected. This area is going to get affected. And even this area is going to get affected. All areas get affected. You notice that? It's very interesting how life works, right? Now, when you divide this and you put all your time every day there, the only thing that I've seen happen in my life and I see with many people, they go up, 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 up. Up, up, they drop a little bit. The scale goes like this, up, up, drop a little bit, up, 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 drop a little bit, but they continue going up. The people who don't take care of this area, they just go like this. And sometimes they go down. Is this making sense to you? Yes? Okay, perfect. Uh, so, just examples, drinking, doesn't help any of these areas. Watching TV doesn't help any of these areas. Going shopping just for going shopping, not because you need things, doesn't help any of these areas. Um, let's talk about what other things won't help these areas. Anybody? Ideas? Gambling. Gambling. There you go. Doesn't help these areas. If you think about any bad habits, 
doesn't help these areas. That doesn't mean that we need to be clean. We are humans and we make mistakes. I'm not saying that we need to be clean. What I'm saying with this is for you to only pay attention to the things that you're seeing and that you're doing to see how your life is working. If you want how this and all this apply to your weight loss, it's because right here, it's a basic need for you to be fulfilled, to transcend. Right here is a basic need for you to keep your, ba your, ba your, your life balance. If you don't have that basic need, it's going affect, to affect everything else. Make sense? Okay. Any questions, anybody? <laughs>